Wisdom is often misunderstood. It's not an elusive quality reserved for ancient sages or mystical figures. It's grounded in everyday choices and actions. Those who embody wisdom may not even call themselves wise, yet they navigate life with a sense of clarity and understanding that many aspire to. What sets them apart is not some secret knowledge, but a commitment to avoiding behaviors that muddy the waters of true understanding. These actions, or non-actions to be precise, paint a picture of a life lived with intentional awareness. In this video, we'll explore these three fundamental behaviors that wise and spiritually attuned individuals deliberately avoid, equipping you with key insights to enrich your own journey toward wisdom. 1. Giving up versus letting go. In the journey of life, we often encounter forks in the road that challenge our resolve. One such challenge is the decision between giving up and letting go. Although they might seem like synonyms, they are as different as night and day. Giving up is a retreat, a forfeiture of your agency, whereas letting go is an intentional release, a freeing of oneself from the anchors that bind us. Many people mix these two actions up, equating surrendering with quitting, but they are entirely different practices with vastly different outcomes. Quitting is a trap that leads you towards stagnation. It is the abandonment of hope and aspiration. The act of quitting puts you on a path toward an abyss of unrealized potential and lost dreams. Letting go, on the other hand, is a transformative act. In the Christian tradition, it aligns with the notion of the way, the truth, and the life, a phrase meant to capture the essence of the divine path leading to salvation or heaven. In Zen Buddhism, this concept closely resembles the idea of Satori, a moment of profound understanding achieved through authentic presence and a quieted mind. This moment isn't a cessation of effort, but an embrace of the current moment in all its fullness, without clinging to expectations or fears. This surrender is not a loss of self, but rather an avenue for higher spiritual power to flow through us. It's akin to Christians speaking about surrendering to Jesus, allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest His will within us for our betterment and realization of our divine purpose. In Taoism, the ancient Chinese philosophy, this idea is profoundly illustrated. The Tao Te Ching, a fundamental text, speaks directly to this in chapter 15. The master does not aspire to fullness. Without aspiring, without expectation, he is present and welcomes everything. This teaching emphasizes the importance of remaining open and unattached, allowing life to unfold naturally. In doing so, we align ourselves with the natural order, or the Tao, and live in a state of Wu Wei, effortless action. You see, Taoism teaches us that life is like a river. It twists and turns. And if we cling too tightly to the banks out of fear or uncertainty, we're likely to get stuck. We end up fighting against the natural current instead of flowing with it. Letting go means jumping into the river, surrendering to its course, and using its energy to navigate through life's complexities. This doesn't mean we relinquish control or disengage from life. Rather, it means we engage with it more fully, with a sense of alignment and freedom. It's critical to differentiate between these two approaches in life, giving up and letting go, because the quality of your life depends on this choice. Giving up closes doors, stifles growth, and culminates in a life of regret. Letting go, however, swings doors wide open. It elevates you, liberates your spirit, and sets you on a course toward enlightenment, however you define it. When you encounter obstacles or difficulties, remember, never give up, but always be willing to let go. This is not a paradox. It's the cornerstone of spiritual wisdom and the key to unlocking a life filled with purpose, joy, and inner peace. Two, living in the past or future. It's a common tendency for many of us to either dwell on the past or daydream about the future. Picture it like standing on a narrow bridge, where one side drops into a river of past memories 
and the other side plunges into a stream of future possibilities. The bridge itself is the present moment, and it's far too easy to lean over the railing, losing balance and missing what lies directly beneath our feet. Yet, those who walk the path of wisdom understand the importance of staying centered on that bridge, savoring the present moment for all it's worth. Think of the past as a closed book. It's a tale that's already been told, its pages inked and dry. Revisiting those pages might offer some lessons, but they shouldn't become a place where we set up camp. Dwelling on past errors, regrets, or even victories can be like walking in circles, forever covering the same ground without moving forward. The future, on the other hand, is like an unwritten book. While it's essential to have goals and plans, spending too much time in the landscape of what-ifs can cause unnecessary anxiety. If you've ever found yourself unable to sleep because you're fretting about an event weeks or even months away, you've experienced this firsthand. It's like staring so long at the horizon that you trip over the rock right in front of you. A famous quote from Lao Tzu, a foundational figure in Taoism, captures this sentiment succinctly. If you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. These words remind us that peace and wisdom are found not in the endless loops of yesterday or the infinite possibilities of tomorrow, but right here, right now. Being present doesn't mean ignoring the past or neglecting to plan for the future. Instead, it's about finding balance. It's knowing when to learn from our history and when to let go, when to plan for what lies ahead, and when to release our grip on the steering wheel of life. Imagine walking a tightrope. If you lean too far in either direction, toward the past or the future, you'll lose your balance and fall. But if you center yourself, focusing on each step as you take it, you'll make it across unscathed. Three, the trap of knowing it all. The path of spiritual wisdom is not a destination, but an ongoing journey, a continual unfolding. It's like a river that never stops flowing, always moving, always changing. Those who claim to know it all place a dam in their river of wisdom, stalling their progress and trapping themselves in a stagnant pool. Imagine someone who claims to have seen every color there is to see, only to refuse to look when a new shade appears in the sky. They miss out on the richness that comes from being open to new experiences and perspectives. In the words of Confucius, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. This speaks to the profound understanding that our learning never ends and that every encounter is a new opportunity to grow and to refine our understanding of the world and ourselves. The issue of judgment often interweaves with the problem of arrogance. An inflated sense of knowledge often leads to a tendency to judge others, to categorize them, label them, and place them neatly into boxes. It's as if we scale a small hill and reveling in our lofty view, look down upon those we consider less knowledgeable or less enlightened. But this isn't wisdom. It's an illusion, a trick of perspective that keeps us from seeing the endless mountain ranges that lie beyond our limited viewpoint. Humility is the soil in which wisdom grows. To be humble is to recognize that we are eternally students not masters of this existence. A Taoist proverb says, the wise man is one who knows what he does not know. By acknowledging our limitations, we leave room for growth. We allow for the possibility of change, for the metamorphosis from one state of understanding to another, much like the caterpillar that transforms into a butterfly, leaving behind its earthbound form to embrace the endless sky. Four not being grateful. Navigating the path of spiritual wisdom often means taking the less frequented road, a path that may seem strewn with obstacles and hardships. But it's crucial to realize that these are not merely setbacks. They are also opportunities. By adopting a mindset of gratitude, we transform our perspective on these so-called thorns in our lives. They cease to be mere nuisances 
and become instructive experiences that guide us toward growth and understanding. Being thankful isn't just about appreciating the good times. It's about acknowledging the value in every experience, including the difficult ones. Think of it this way. Even the challenging situations are like teachers in disguise, offering us precious lessons we need to evolve. This approach doesn't just advance our spiritual growth. It also leads to a richer, more fulfilling life. The simple act of helping others can offer a glimpse into this truth. We often feel good when we offer help, not just because it's socially commendable, but because, deep down, we know it's the right thing to do. Understanding that each challenge holds an opportunity is a kind of spiritual alchemy. It changes how we move through the world, turning obstacles into stepping stones on our path to growth. This sense of gratitude isn't merely a comforting thought. It's a transformative force. It unlocks new dimensions of understanding, enabling us to navigate life's complexities with a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment. So, when life presents you with thorns, don't simply endure them, embrace them. See them as the teachers they are, each one holding the key to a new level of understanding and a richer experience of life. Adopting this perspective doesn't just make us more resilient, it makes us wiser, transforming not only how we view our challenges, but also how we appreciate our entire journey. 5. The pitfalls of ego and excess. In the quest for spiritual wisdom, two pitfalls can easily divert us from our path. Ego-driven actions and overindulgence. These two are often intertwined, feeding off each other like weeds choking a garden. When the ego takes the driver's seat, it not only distorts our actions, but also fuels the temptation to overindulge, be it in food, material pleasures, or even in the words we speak. The ego loves the spotlight and thrives on extremes. It pushes us to win at all costs, not for the betterment of all, but for self-glorification. This need for validation can lead us down a path of excess, convincing us that more is better. Yet, spiritual wisdom teaches us the value of moderation, urging us to find a middle ground between deprivation and excess. Taking action from a place of compassion and understanding is the antidote to ego-driven behavior. When we act not to prove ourselves, but to contribute to the greater good, we find balance. We eat to nourish our bodies, not to fill an emotional void. We speak to share and connect, not to dominate conversations. We partake in life's pleasures, but without losing ourselves in them. This balanced approach aligns with many spiritual teachings that promote a harmonious life. In this state of equilibrium, we are neither slaves to our ego nor prisoners of our desires. We become like a well-tuned instrument, producing the melodious sounds of empathy, contentment, and genuine happiness. 6. Not taking responsibility. Taking responsibility for our actions and life circumstances is a cornerstone of spiritual wisdom. It's not about placing blame on ourselves for everything that happens. Rather, it's about understanding our role in shaping our experiences. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, gives us a compelling example to consider. In his book, Meditations, Marcus Aurelius delves into the subject of responsibility in a way that's both deep and accessible. One of his key points is that when we're betrayed by someone, it's partly our responsibility. Why? Because we chose to place our trust in an unreliable person. He invites us to consider, if the person has shown themselves to be unreliable, why would we expect them to be any different? This teaching challenges us to reevaluate our own decisions and expectations, rather than blame others for the outcomes we face. It shifts the focus from why did this happen to me, to what can I learn from this? This kind of responsibility is empowering. It grants us the authority to shape our own destiny, offering us a path to amend past decisions and make wiser choices moving forward. 
The idea here isn't to carry a burden of guilt, but to wield the tool of responsibility to carve out a more enlightened path for ourselves. By understanding that our choices have consequences, both good and bad, we become more conscious decision makers. We learn to trust more discerningly, act more wisely, and live more authentically. So, the next time you find yourself blaming life or others for your problems, remember the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. Taking responsibility isn't just about owning up to your actions. It's about claiming the power to create a better, more spiritually aligned future for yourself. For a deeper dive in these concepts, check out Marcus Aurelius Meditations or the Tao the Ching. Links are in the description. Thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share it with others on their own spiritual journeys. For more exclusive content and insights, consider joining our membership or supporting us on Patreon. Until next time, take care and goodbye.